VR. Oh, lovely glancing touch. Brilliant glancing touch. Mancini with the leveler. The Cultural Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas Di Giovanni. We want to bring Cultural back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at The Cultural Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The intro song is Fireworks by Jazz. Eight PM in Quebec now means uh, stay at home, don't leave the house, find something to do at home. But also 8 p.m. in Quebec means it's recording of the Caltro guys with Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and Nicholas Di Giovanni, and we're gonna get started right away with our guest this week, uh, Vice President, for, Vice President from Roma Club Philadelphia, Gijo Longo. Gijo, how's it going? Yeah, tutto posto. <laughs> All good. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> intro. Uh, we've had you on before. So this is your second time on the podcast, and and. What we normally do with our guests, well, you know, we asked you uh, the last time you ha- we had you on how you became a Roma fan. You told us your story, but with the with the uh, with the uh, Derby coming up tomorrow, I wanted to change things up a bit. I want to ask you ask you what the Derby della Capi- Capitale means to you. What what when you see Roma Lazio play, what does that mean to you? Ooh, well, I mean, the Derby della Capitale has always been the biggest game. I feel like because Roma and Lazio are not the perennial title contenders every year. You know, like Juve, Inter, AC Milan. These guys are always, I would say, the top. Excuse my cat for a second. but And, uh, <laughs> the, um, I, you know, the, the big game of the year is always the Lazio-Roma game. It's just, we're, it's always a game to look forward to. No matter where we are in, in the standings, it's always a game that we bring the full, you know, a full force, and the, and the the fans, supporters are always big on that game. So, uh, if there's nothing to look forward to, there's always you can always look forward to a derby game. So, and I, now this derby game is a huge derby game because I really believe it's big for positioning uh, for both teams. I mean, yeah. I really think if Lazio loses this game, I think it's be really hard for them to to, to sort of get back into it. It, you know, I feel like since they came back from uh, from COVID, the lockdown, they just haven't been the same team. I, I think that has a lot to do with, especially this season, them playing in, in the Coppa Italia and uh, and Europa, which they didn't have last year. So I think that having to do different formations and everything for every game and not not being not being as fresh as they were last season, just playing in regular in the Campionato. It's been different for Lazio this season, which is why I think they've, they've been struggling a little bit more. Um, so obviously, we all have plenty, plenty of fond memories of the Derby. The past couple of years haven't been too too great, but if there was like one favorite Derby moment of yours, what would you say it is? For me, my favorite Derby moment. Oh, gosh, I mean. It's so typical. Totti selfie. Totti so, selfie. I love the Totti selfie. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. I mean, it's a great moment. Um, yeah, I, I, because it just pops in my head. So it has to be that. I, I've been to I've been to a couple derbies, uh, but none of them have gone my way. So I can't really hold on to them <laughs> of those games. What's What's the atmosphere like at a at a derby? Oh wow! I mean, it's when I when I go to a game here. Like say I, I, I you know, I go to I have season tickets for MLS games. They're, they're a good time, and I have I, I go to a lot of Eagles games. And I feel like when you go to a game here in the states, the atmosphere is manufactured. But when you go to a game in the Campionato, it is just the energy is just another level. And when you go to a derby game. The Tifosi are, are out in full force. I, I remember the, 
the last derby game I went to it was actually um, it was the, the Coppa Italia game. There was a second leg where Roma lost. I think or no, they actually won three two, but they lost. Uh, it was a semi final game, and it was the first game that the the curve of Sud came back after not being in the curve of Sud for like a, for like a year. So they were out in full force. I mean, banners waving. And even the Lazio fans too. I mean, they came out with all these blue and white flags waving. It was, it was uh, a really uh, like beautiful moment just to be in the stadium and see that witnessing it in person. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. It really is incredible. Oh yeah, I would have to absolutely agree. I mean, I can't say I've been to a, a derby, but uh, you know, just the uh, the atmospheres in the stadiums, especially in Italy, uh, for how passionate the fans are out there, it's 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 like second to none. It gives you another. It gives you like an adrenaline rush yourself. Like you want to jump onto the pitch and, and you oh, yeah. know, uh, you know, and start playing the game as well. But um, if we're, if we're docking now, obviously the game is tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, on Friday afternoon, only game on. So everybody should have their eyes on that game. Like you mentioned, G. Joe, uh, you know, without uh, depending, no matter what, how the campeonato is going, the Derby is always a special game. Um, quick thoughts on how, what, what do you think of uh, the matchup tomorrow? And uh, I don't know if you're, uh, the typical Italian that doesn't like to give a prediction, but uh, if you have any predictions, uh, what, what do you what, what do you make of uh, what do you make of tomorrow's match? Well, I would say that Roma looks to be playing in better form than they have been than it than it in the last like month and a half since the the, the Atalanta game where they like where they just kind of just crumbled. Yeah, uh, you know, I would say that they played a solid game against Inter. On Sunday morning, you know you can look at it two ways. They were, they had the lead; they should have won, but they also came back and they tied. You know, a team that everyone looks at as this title contender. You know, two years ago, Conte wouldn't even he didn't, he didn't even want to come to Rome because he's like Rome has no shot at winning the Campionato. But this weekend, you know, after all the after the game, Conte, you know, he had to do an interview with all the all the reporters and he said he said you know how could you lose to a team like Roman and he's like oh he's a, they're a title contender so now you know Roman's <laughs> a title contender right according so, to Conte yeah according to Conte <laughs> so, but if, if they won that game they'd be in second place yeah so I think that because they didn't win that game I think that now they're going to go into this game more eager to win so it's going to be a bigger game and I, I feel like in the, going into this game, it's going to be. I think you're going to see almost the exact same formation coming into the game. I would say uh, one change you might see is maybe uh, Gonzalo Villar. You'll you'll see. Um, uh, uh, Mancini. No. Here no, no. You know, uh, you know, very, very too. Um... Mickey Terry. <laughs> We're gonna start naming you the the whole squad list. <laughs> Cristante, Cristante, Cristante. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so I, think, I think I think I think you'll see Cristante come into play because I think that he, because you have uh, Luis Alberto Malik, Malikovic Savage, you know, a couple yep. big guys there in the middle for Lazio that I don't think uh, I. I think that you're, you're going to need Veritu and a, a guy with a little bit bigger stature like Cristante to sort of hold them down. Um, I think it's going to be, I think, and, you know, Chris Small, I think the interesting battle also will be Immobile versus Smalling. Just watching those two guys go up against each other. I mean, that'll be, a, 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 you know, a lot of fun too, seeing that go down. And it's going to be very different than the Lukaku-Smalling matchup of this past weekend, Lukaku was very physical, very big. Mobile is going to be a little more finesse, long shots from the outside. So I, I think those are going to be the big matchups. I think one of the uh, besides, I, I said that I think that's going to be the same lineup. I think one the one thing I could see change though would be in, in goalie. Paul Lopez has been the, the goalie for the last three games. He looked pretty good, but I could see maybe Mirante coming in. I may, you know, I I just okay. feel like me personally, I just feel more secure when, when Mirante is in goal. And I don't know. Last week, 
you know, on Sun Sunday he led two goals. And I just feel like for such a, a big Italian game like this, you almost want to have like the Italian keeper in net too. That's <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Morante fan. I I like to see Morante playing. Um, what do you think about Roma's season so far? For me, I find it's a bit of a surprise, but I want to hear your thoughts about it. It's a, it's a, it's a surprise. It's a surprise, and I would say a letdown <laughs> sometimes too. Okay. You, know, you, you right. always want you always want more. Uh, so like this weekend, this game, this Friday, you, you want to see Roma finally sort of get that monkey off their back and win a game against the top five six team. They haven't they haven't beat Inter. They haven't been Juventus. They haven't beat Napoli. They haven't beat uh, Atalanta. So. I mean, not that Lazio is this great team, but they were a great team. And they are, you know, trying to contend to get back in. So I think really to make a statement, Roma has to win. And I think, uh, yeah, in Fonseca's tenure, he still hasn't beat Lazio. I think it's, I think he has four ties against them in a row. Yeah. So I, I, like that's like an interesting stat. So to finally break that, that trend would be yeah. big, especially here. Going into an easy game next week too, so you win this, and you go into a, a nice, you know, easier game, which in Roma life always means that you're probably going to lo- we're going to lose that game too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jinx it, please. <laughs> Classic. You better not going to win now. Yeah, I just did. <laughs> we heard. I, I personally, heard. I like I was talking to one of my uh, Roma club members earlier today. And we both said the exact same thing. We said Roma 3-1. So, there it is. There's the prediction. There it is. That's our prediction. I, I think uh, I think a lot of like neutral city I fans just want to see high-scoring games. Like, you know, especially we don't like those derbies where it's like 0-0 or 1-1. Uh, some, most of the time we want to see a winner, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, we, got a, we got a couple of uh, social, me- social media questions. Oh, here we go. One of them, uh, I guess, I guess it's Billy who wrote this from Pizza Calcio. So Billy's the Roma fan, and uh, he wrote, "Is uh, Gonzalo Villar the best MF in Serie?" A? So I'm guessing, in, I'm guessing in this in this case, MF m- means midfielder, but it, right, right, right. It, it could also just mean motherfucker. So is he the best motherfucker in the Serie? A? I mean, he looked he looked really sharp. I would say in, in against Inter. Uh, Last week, last week. So, I still feel though he, like, he's a little fresh, a little young. So we'll we'll see. You know, I, I don't want to jump the gun with Vilar because uh, I feel like in the past couple of years we, we jumped the gun a little too soon. A couple of our players like like Under, like everyone was on, on Under saying that he was the best thing. So like my cool. judgment is still I'm on hold with Vilar. You know, let's see how he does this year and you know how he does next year. I think he's pretty good. I'm not. I'm not saying he's the best yet, or really, you know, I'm not saying he's that. He's. Not, I'm not saying he's the best MF or yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe on the horizon for VR. But no, uh, okay. honestly, he's been a young, a young star that's been uh, exciting to watch in the Serie A. Uh, I, mean, I find that from an outsider's perspective. I don't know about you, uh, Gigi. Yeah, no, no. I, I think one of the great things about Rome is that they play all these young players, and that's what what is like the complete opposite of Lazio. Uh, there's something like Rome, uh, Rome averages, uh, I forget if it's like, they have like over 2,000 minutes of over of under 21 players, but like Lazio has like like zero. Like they don't play any <laughs> under 21. Like they're, they're like, their future is not looking too good right now. But Rome, you know, they're, they're setting, their, they're really setting themselves, themselves up for the next, next decade. I mean, even, uh, you know, we haven't seen him in a couple of games, but like Kumbala, Kumbala from Albania, he looks yeah. like you know, he's yeah. a great defender. Fantastic. Yeah. Kumbala, Mancini, Vilar, Zaniola, we haven't seen yet. Pellegrini, I mean, the, the team looks, you know, ready to be a contender for the next couple of years. You know, even, uh, you know, uh, last, not not this past week, but the week before, my URL really came out with scoring two goals. So I mean, I mean, I know a lot of people were screaming for him against Inter, but I feel like, you get, especially in a, in a derby game, 
you can't have my RL. You have to have Jack. I mean, you need a captain of the team out there. Yeah. To really represent himself. Represent the no, team. I totally, yeah, I totally agree with that. With that. I totally agree with that. Um, another player that uh, got mentioned in, in our social media questions, uh, this one actually comes from uh, a good friend, Daniel Lucci. We had him last week on the podcast. Uh, he asks, uh, do you, Joe, thought, uh, thoughts on Karsdorp this season? Uh, impressive or still not good enough? I know there's no. been mixed uh, mixed opinions about Karsdorp. He's even just his form has looked up and down uh, these past couple of years. Uh, again, that's looking from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what do you make of that? What do you make of his play uh, as a late? So, uh, la- last year, Karsdorp, he, he, I would say, never really started. He came in off the bench a lot. And yeah. when he was in the game, I would just shake my head. I just like, oh, no. Karsdorp coming in. <laughs> I was like, this game is not going to go, it's not going to end well. But this yeah. year, Karsdorp, he's, he's been starting all the games. He, uh, Fonseca's system that he has in place has been working really well. And I would say that Karsdorp, he's been having a great season. I would say he's one of the keys to the success of this season. I mean, he's been, he's been really a rock out there on the on the right side for them. So him, Mancini. I mean, move, uh, I think one of the brilliant moves that that Fonseca did after that Atlanta thrashing was move Pellegrini out of the midfield and put him up front. It, it really has changed the team a lot. And, it, and it, I think that there's a little more, more confidence in the team right now. There's something, I, I, I don't think Pellegrini is a midfielder. I think he needs to be playing up front and he, he he's been showing the last couple of games where he's scoring, he's playmaking. Uh, so I, I'm looking f- this week, this tomorrow, I think that it's going to be a big game coming from the coming from the wings. Pellegrini, Mkhitaryan, I think both those guys are going to have have good games. Yeah, like I like the way you you spoke about how Fonseca has been doing some changes because that, that's one thing I've been constantly like saying on a podcast that he's got a team that is not really built around his style of play, but he's trying his best to make it work, and he has been getting results. Yeah. And speaking of like players that are. Like that we could potentially use. We have a question that came from our friend uh, Jake Vinciguera on uh, on Instagram. He asks, uh, "Is there anywhere Roma could look to improve? Perhaps bring in Cragno in the back uh, as our as a keeper." I mean, I like that idea, but uh, what, how about you? Like, what do you think about that? I mean, I, I'm really hoping for that for the El Shawari move to happen. I think we all are. <laughs> I mean. It, Really, that that would be a huge shot in the in the offense. I mean, ha- having Zaniolo, him and Zaniolo come back. Uh, I mean, who needs another transfer move when you have those two guys coming in? If you in you know if, if, if Zaniolo comes back in like February March, El Sharari comes in now soon. You know they don't need to make any other moves. That's it to me. Because then you have two. You have El Sharari knows the system. And my, my only fear with our Shawabi right now is that he's been playing in China for a year and a half, so he, who knows what the speed of the game is out there or whatever, but I, I'm sure he's still, well, I'm sure he, he, he can still play well. Are, are there are there other moves or players you, you'd like Roma to target, or, or do you think um, this squad is, is kind of a good squad to go with in the final, final four or five months of the season? The defense is rock solid. There's nothing there I would change. Uh, I mean, the only thing I can really think of would be just like if they is the striker. I mean, I love yeah, Jacko. I, I love Jacko, but and uh, Mayoral looks you know looks good for you know could be a good future candidate there. But that, to bring in somebody else that really has a a, a pedigree. I think it would be good just for the uh, second half stretch there. Maybe on the left, too, because Spinazzola, you know, he's coming off an injury. Who knows? He, he, he seems a little wonky, too. You know, he gets a little he gets <laughs> injured here and there. So at that mid position there where he's playing, it could, it could, we could use someone extra there, too. Ooh, I'm not sure. That's. Up to whoever's running. Oh, that's the, fair. That's fair. That's a fair judgment. Sporting, the sporting director spot at Rome right now. 
That's it. That's it. Uh, no, that's a fair assessment. I think we've been nagging on, on this show about a vice, uh, vice Jekyll for, for a long time now. I think most Roma fans probably uh, would feel the same. Uh, I mean, you know, these strikers, these older strikers, they, they, we always like to say they age like fine wine, but there's going to come a point where you have to move on. And uh, no, Jekyll is definitely uh, like Roma and Jekyll, that they go hand in hand. I absolutely agree. But uh, finding a, a, a replacement so they incorporated Mayoral, but maybe uh, another plan uh, for the future would, would be good as well. But um, another another player that uh, kind of, I, I don't know, bursted onto the scene. Uh, for me, it was a bit unexpected how he would produce. But uh, Mikitarian uh, for Roma this season has been, uh, in my personal opinion, fantastic. Uh, fantastic addition, which, I, again, I didn't know how he was going to be coming, uh, coming to Italy, uh, playing in Rome uh, under Fonseca. Uh, but he's really proven his worth uh, this season. I believe he's uh, what eight goals and eight assists. He leads uh, the assist charts, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I just want to ask you, Juju, your 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 thoughts on on Mikitarian and uh, is this a player that uh, can stay on for for a bit more of the longer haul? I believe his contract situation they're looking to extend, or they already extended it. But uh, what have what have you made about Mikitarian's uh, impact? Yeah, no, no. I think that they've extended him for another two years. I love Mkhitaryan. He's such a, a well-rounded player. Like you said, eight, you know, uh, was it eight goals, eight assists, right? I mean, I, I believe so. You can't ask for much better than that at the uh, at around the halftime, half point, halfway point of the season. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Um, I, I think that that is really the the strong. It's gonna be the, the strong point moving forward into the rest of the season is that you have a player like Mkhitaryan that can pick up the slack of, of, of scoring goals when Jacko is not scoring. I mean, I, I feel, I feel like you could almost put Mkhitaryan up there as a striker and he would do almost as well a job as a striker, you know, or even a false nine or even a false nine. You never know, but he's even producing assists, uh, you know, replacing, you know, you guys lost Zaniolo. Everybody was in maybe a bit of a panic. You know, Miki Tarian comes in, and he's been really, uh, you know, proving proving a lot. So it's it's been fantastic to see. Oh yeah, no, no. I'm 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 a huge fan. I, uh, Rome has been able to grab these couple players like him and Smalling from the Premier League and really revive their their <clears throat> their, their their playing time here. Pe- so Pe- Pedro also, I found. Uh... I think Pedro's been playing pretty well. Just kind of that depth, that depth piece for for Roma this year for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's coming. He's actually, uh, I think he's available to play tomorrow. I think he's been hurt. So okay. uh, yeah, that'll be great. You know, another great depth piece too for Roma. So, no, last so, year, so last year was a nightmare because one of the reasons they did they did so poor last year was because of injuries. And you know, we have injuries this year too with Zaniolo, but they they haven't been as as debilitating as they as they were last year, so to see a, a full team with a nice nice amount of depth in the, in the squad going into this part of the season is a good sign. Uh, I, I wanted to I wanted to wanted to ask. So there was uh, Coppa Italia this week. Uh, Roma and Lazio both played next week. Um, we kind of saw with the bigger teams like Juve, Inter, Milan. Uh, it, it looked like they didn't really focus too much. On the Coppa Italia, a lot of young players playing. Uh, maybe it's because of the pack schedule. You know, obviously some star players needed some rest. Um, do you think Roma should put a lot of em- emphasis on the Coppa Italia? Do you want them to really go for it? it? I know it's been a while since Roma last won a trophy. So so having a trophy would, would be great. I, I don't know. How, how, how much should they focus on the Coppa? I think they they have to play it. How they, almost how every other team plays it. They just play those first couple of games. They win, they win, and then if they get to a certain point where it looks like they're in the quarterfinals, then they get serious. I think, but I think that they have a lot at stake with uh, with Europa. I, me personally, I I'd rather see a, a Europa Cup. Uh, I mean, to me that that's a great. A lot of people don't look at that trophy as a great trophy, but I oh. think it is a great trophy, and I think that it, that would be a fantastic statement. To, to the soccer world if they won that trophy. Yeah, it's an international sure. trophy. You yeah. definitely would consider that higher up than a domestic title, in my personal opinion. So, yeah. uh, And especially for how sometimes tough the competition can be, especially after 
uh, what is it, the top to, during the top 16s when all, oh my God, my brain is shutting down on me. When do all the UCL teams come down? The top 16, right? For the, the, the top 32. No. Yeah, Anyways, uh, when now you, in the knockout the, stage. Yeah, when the champ, yeah, in the knockout stages, when the Champions League teams come down, you know, like it gets a bit tighter, the competition. You're, you're not just playing against, for lack of a better term, weaker teams. You know, you're playing against some top quality teams. So, uh, definitely, I think I, I agree with you there. So your a Europa League title will definitely have much more value than a Coppa Italia, but it'd still be nice to win a title or two. <laughs> but, uh, what what are the other games you guys are looking forward to this weekend? I mean the Derby d'Italia for sure. Uh, Juve Inter, you got a nice little derby uh, uh, between uh, Sassuolo and Parma. I don't think that's actually considered a derby. I mean the two teams from uh, Emilia <laughs> Romagna. That's <laughs> I think that's the big game Fiorentina, of the weekend. Fiorentina Napoli. Yeah, there's other. Yeah, yeah, there's. Uh, yeah, I'll probably say I, I would probably agree with Nick. Fiorentina Napoli looks. It could be exciting, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I would probably. Besides the the derby, I think the two derbies this weekend we got spoiled this week. We had two big derbies uh, in one in one match day, so uh, it, it's always fun. Um, you you made uh, Juju. You made a quick prediction, or you guys down in uh, Roma Cup Philadelphia made a prediction for the score. Uh, tomorrow's game 3-1 if we can push the envelope a bit further before we let you go um, where does the finish if, if I can poke those buttons where where do they finish you're saying yeah, oh you, you broke you're up you're a bit choppy I think we lost him do they finish off yeah do they finish four Champions League in the horizon uh, yeah Adrian's a bit choppy I think he's just asking where, where do you think they finish uh, this season I'm feeling pretty good about about finishing top three. Honestly, I don't know who wins the Scudetto. Whoa. I feel like, and I feel I I uh, I, I know my friends at uh, Milan Club Philly will won't like to hear this, but I don't think that uh, I don't think AC Milan's going to win. I just I feel, <laughs> like they, I feel like they're like the Lazio <laughs> last year, and you know they're hot. There's only six points. You know, we're still a half a season to, half a season to go. I'm not saying Rome's going to do it. We we all we all know the old lady, you know. Doesn't matter how many points behind when he comes up, when it comes down to it, they always make up the points. Uh, I mean, it was like in 2016, Roma was up on Juventus by nine points, and and, and they still beat Rome. Yeah, they. Was... <laughs> that that was the season where I think it was in October. Juve were twelfth. They had just lost to Sassuolo, and they were in twelfth. And it was like crisis mode. And then they went on and win, won uh, twenty five straight games. I mean, it's a different exactly. scenario this year. Um, I I think you know for Juve, it, it it's a matter of Derby coming up this weekend and and second half of the season just winning and winning. So it's obviously going to be hard. But with- even not even Napoli, you know, they could catch fire. And we're, they're like in sixth place. I mean, they could they could start running up the standings. I mean, they looked really good against Rome. So I did that. But I mean, Atalanta, all these teams, it, 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 everything's so tight. I mean, even if Lazio wins tomorrow, they can start making yeah. a run to go up. So absolutely, it's 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 hard to make a really prediction. But I I think like like I I think Rome has a good team. The one thing I worry about. Uh, is a consistent thing that happens is the is that second half drop off for Roma uh, that they that, that we think we talk about is it, it just like against the, against Napoli, Atalanta, uh, Milan and at the beginning those first 10 15 minutes of the second half something happens and the defense like shuts down midfield shuts down and 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 they let up a bunch of goals and it seems to be something that happens repetitive. In, in a lot of these games that they play against uh, the top contenders, so I mean, if they if they can play a full game without these mental errors and without these breakdowns in the middle of the game, I think they have a shot at finishing top three. Well said. Well said. Very nice. Uh, that that'll do it uh, for us, Gijo. Where can we find you on social media if uh, anybody's li- listening from Philadelphia and they want to? You know, become part of the the club. How 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 can uh, that happen? Oh, um, they, all reach that. out to us, Roma Roma Club Philadelphia, 
uh, sorry, our Twitter, Roma Club Philadelphia on Instagram, Roma Club Philadelphia on Facebook, and uh, my my Twitter handle is Gbotic. Perfect. Uh... Talk all things Roma. Even talk a little little un- un- Philadelphia Union soccer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the, in the summertime, you have to watch. You have to watch something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect, uh, Gijo. Thanks for joining us. And uh, oh, wait, uh, what do you guys think about the new Montreal Impact? Oh, oh, oh don't even get us started. Oh, oh. It's don't awful. Even get started. Horrible. Oh. It's that, it's don't even get us started. Snowflake? It's a, and it's they're calling themselves though. snowflakes. They're like, we oh, are snowflakes. We're like, no, don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, someone on that we, marketing uh, team, no call me. <laughs> wow. I saw I saw that come out and I said, "What is that logo?" I was like, that, it, it, "So it, did it, everybody here in Montreal?" Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, so, yeah, like ninety nine percent of the population hated it. Like the name change is fine. Club de Foot Montreal is fine. Yeah. It's a very Euro. It's a very Euro fine. But the logo itself was poorly executed. Yeah. Poorly executed. They were trying to like a coworker might have said to nice go for like a casual look. It's so like that. Like it's not just a, like it's not just a soccer jersey brand. It's like a brand that people can wear casually, type of thing or whatever. But I, I can't. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, maybe that's, maybe that's when horrible. they go skiing or snowboarding, maybe <laughs> they, can, they can put on that on. No, you know, like, how are you supposed the, to know that that's, that's a soccer? There's, there's like nothing. There's not. Like, I don't know. I felt like I was looking at it. I was like, maybe if you turn the snowflake into a soccer ball somehow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I, I actually was in Montreal last summer, and I went to a game. I went to the Union Montreal game. And uh, I went okay. to, the, to the Stade Olympique, and I, uh, I and I actually was blown away at the supporters. I was yeah. because in most stadiums there's a supporter sections on one side, but up there you have supporters on both sides. Yeah, and everyone's going wild, great, great atmosphere. And I was like, this is great. I was like, I'd love to see uh, soccer, but it was funny because when I was walking, I was there for a couple of days, and. Uh, Every night I'd go out to a different bar and I would just kind of, I would sit at the bar and I would talk to the bartender, talk to people around me, and I'd ask them about you know the Montreal Impact team and how they like them. And then they would be, they would look at me like clueless, like they didn't, they didn't even notice the team existed. They're like, "Do you want to talk about the Canadians?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, that's it. Talk, yeah. talk, Shift talk, gears. talk to somebody. I want to know what's the vibe on the team." But I guess so there must there must be a, a con, there's a small contingent, but a large contingent. At the same time, that like yeah. to go in there to, to the games. I mean, I the game I went to. Oh my god, it was a trouncing. I think we, we lost five one or five nothing. Oh my god, it was a nightmare. Okay. I mean, at least I, I, at least, I, used at least to... I, had a, I had a great time though. I love Montreal. I'm going back. Nice little convo with uh, DJ Longo, Vice President of uh, Roma Club Philadelphia here on the Couch of Guys, Gianni Del Colli. Adriano Dondarno, Nicholas Di Giovanni. That was something elated by Broke for free. Um, so we had the talk of the Derby. There is uh, there is another Derby this weekend, the Derby d'Italia. So it, it's, not the, it's not the first time that the city has done this, uh, putting two big games together. Um, uh, as I mentioned in our in our chat with uh, with Gigi, I'm just kind of shocked that Roma Lazio is, is Friday afternoon. Just just a weird or Friday night in in Italy. Just just weird, you know. Um, usually those those games are the prime time games on Saturday Sunday, but it is what it is. Uh, but but before we 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 get into other things, uh, we had the Coppa Italia this week. And I don't know how you guys feel about uh, Coppa Italia this year because it really looks like the teams just just don't care especially the top teams like that's that's the sense that i got uh watching a bit of milan what you know watching juve's game a lot of a lot of players resting you know for juve you had you know had you had so many young guys uh some guys i didn't i didn't even know um and just the level of play they it didn't even look like they they wanted to be there uh we already have a packed schedule and then on top of it uh milan Juve and Inter 
Owen all went into extra time. And I said this in our in our group chat. Um, with everything happening, with already the pack schedule, with already so many injuries and COVID cases and this and that, th- with these games, they should have just gone straight into penalties. Why do we need uh, an extra 30 minutes of this already boring soccer? I don't know how you guys feel. It's it. I I like the extra time because um, like it, you call it boring soccer because if it doesn't yield a goal, it's boring. But to lose a game based on penalties to a um, like I want to say complete luck factor, there is skill to penalty shots, but there's a lot more of an influence of luck and penalty in a penalty shootout than there is to an additional playing to additional playing time. Uh, at that point, it just comes down to who's got a more accurate shot and or who's got the keeper who who makes the right guess at the right time, you know. So sometimes the better team doesn't win. Um, I think in Juve's case, they're the ones. Not, not and this is not a, a critic, a critique at all. In Juve's case, their mind is not on Coppa Italia. They don't want. They don't care about a Coppa Italia. For them, that's not the goal. We said it's. I think it's been something that's been in talks since they got Ronaldo. Um, for them, their main goal is Champions League. Scudetto is a secondary goal, despite what Bonucci said last year. Scudetto was mostly our, our, our goal for this year type of thing. But but uh, for them, Scudetto is second in priority. First in priority is the Champions League. So I think they don't care. Inter want to push for a title. So I think they do have a bit of a – like more of a, a, a want for it. Um and for even the other top teams, like, yeah, they might have gone to extra time, but it doesn't mean that they don't care. They don't, they're not taking it seriously. Um, I will have to disagree with you there, Nick. I think uh, only Juve is the only team that for them it's not a priority. Yeah, I think it's it's tough. I mean, uh, it's already a packed schedule, like Nick mentioned. We all know that. It's, uh, it's not, That's all news, right? Um, you know, uh, I think we it was expected to see these types of rotations in the lineups. Um a bit shocking that a lot of the games did go into extra time. Uh, I thought maybe a winner would have been decided earlier on, but especially for the Milan game, it went all the way down to penalties. Uh, uh, you know where we where we needed uh, Tata Rasanu to, to to bail us out there and win and win us the game there. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, you know, like it or not, uh, these games have to be played. Uh, you know, this is still a, a competition. There's still a trophy at the end of the at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, teams might not be going full force right now, but it's it's picking up. Obviously, going into the quarterfinals and into the semis, so um, you know we're still seeing a lot of the big teams uh, still around, right? So um, you know, I, I think maybe later on, when the season continues on and, and things heat up in the Campionato, maybe we'll see a bit of a let off, maybe in Coppa Italia, you know, uh, where uh, you know Inter might be going straight for Scudetto implications, and teams also have to play the European competition games, so. It's uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of games in a short amount of time, but um, I think at the end of the day, uh, teams still want to win. Uh, you don't go play to lose. I, I mean, it'd be the stupid mentality to have, but uh, you know, it is what it is, and you know, these games need to be played. Uh, I guess the one good thing about it is uh, the upset today. Spal beat uh, Sassuolo, so crazy. Had, what uh, six months that uh, Spal wasn't in the Serie A, not even, and they come back and they, <laughs> they beat Sassuolo. And you know what? If you look at their team, they kept a lot of their players. They kept a lot of their players from the Serie A. Uh, Di Francesco is still there. Miseroli, uh, Flocody, um, they, uh, even uh, Berisha is still in Nets. They got a lot, pretty much the same lineup. Uh, they are fifth in the Serie B. Um, so now they go on to play Juve, and then on the same side of the bracket, so you got Juve Spall, and then and then and then Milan Inter. So you got so you got yeah, uh, you got Serie A. A City A versus City A B team, and then and you got the Derby della Madonnina. Uh, if you're gonna describe the, if you're gonna describe your excitement in one word, Adriano, for uh, to, for that to get a third uh, Derby match in this season, uh, what would it be? Well, we're spoiled this year. We got we got an extra Derby, so it's always fun, you know. Uh, especially if especially if we can if we can come out you know on top uh, like we did the first time this season. It's it, it you know it, it's even better. I always say the Derby is like. Uh, you know, it almost uh, counts as six points when you beat your when you beat your direct rivals like that. I know it only counts for three, but winning against a, a, a Russia City rival like that, it's it's, it's it counts almost like say. But uh, yeah, spoiled I think uh, for a new one fan this year. Hopefully, we can get the better in two or three times. And it comes from Mario Rui. Bakayoko! Napoli have a late winner, surely. Great service. And a big header. What an unlikely source to come up with a goal just when they needed one. 
as Lozano shoots from distance and what a goal from Herbing Lozano the Mexican with a brilliant strike from distance uh, so uh, so Napoli Gianni so Napoli uh, kind of a weird game against Udinese Bakayoko as you heard there uh, with the yeah. late goal and then they played Empoli death. it was good to I see Empoli back too yeah, in the Coppa Italia I miss Empoli I, I, yeah. I want I want them back in the city as soon um, and they needed another late goal by uh, Patania uh, 3-2, kind of a back-and-forth game. Uh, what did you make of those uh, two games? Um, th- those games were uh, games that they had to press their nose to the ground to get the win type of thing. Um, there there weren't, like, obviously, Empoli being a City uh, they're a City uh, B team, but they don't play like a City uh, B team. As you can see, they're first place in the league. Uh, shout out to Bajrani, a uh, fantastic player. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Had a little rice stuck in my throat, uh, but just the fact That's that, that yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, just to make sure you guys, it's not, it's not COVID, I swear. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like they they had to grind to get the win, and they did. And uh, you know what? At the end of the day, I, I'm happy that they got the W and didn't have to fight for a draw. Uh, you know, I, I I'll take those gritty wins. I don't. I, I at the end of the day. Uh, it means either moving up in the competition or getting those points that you need in the standings. So um, Lozano himself has been a very critical player right now. Uh, he's been stepping it up for those that are missing, and uh, I think he's like in the past those two, just those two games. He got two goals and an assist. I could be wrong specifically on it, but uh, he's been stepping it up very well, and it's nice to see. So um, Patania being that uh, I don't want to say completely clutch player, I'm very I'm very critical of him, but uh, he did kind of prove me wrong getting that nice uh, winner against uh, Empoli in the Coppa Italia. So I have to give him credit because I have to give credit where credit's due. So yeah, Adri um, Giampaolo finally does something good for Milan. Huh? It's about time. Fuck, we've been waiting, Christ. Two uh, two gifts, <laughs> huh? But but this time it's, he's on the other bench. So. You guys are lucky. Yeah. You guys are lucky. You get to play Torino two games in a row. Me, questo qua, per favore, come on. This guy like uh, makes it seem like Milan uh, Twitter uh, reckon, uh, you know, does the Serie A schedule. You need to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, uh, but no, uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, who knows these days? You know, uh, twenty twenty for you, but or twenty twenty one now. But um, yeah, no, I listen. Uh, I didn't expect, like I said earlier, I didn't expect to get the the, the Copa Italia match to go go the distance uh, all the way to penalties. I thought there would have been a winner uh, before that, but you know, uh, the, you know, they got the win in both. Uh, you know, I guess maybe merited, maybe not. I don't know. However, you want to look at it, but um, for for us, you know, this weekend in the Campionato, it was huge getting the three points. Seeing that, uh, like we spoke earlier with uh, Gigio, how. Uh, Roma and uh, Inter tied, which helped us. We're now three points above uh, above Inter in the standings uh, for in first and second place. So it gives us a bit of breathing room, uh, not very much because everybody's at our tails. But uh, this, you know, we just gotta keep on fighting. So you know, we'll we'll take the points and uh, and run. I guess you can say. Atalanta, Antal- Atalanta. Uh, can we say they're back? I think we could say they're back. They were they were on pause. I think they were, they were on, on pause. pause after that. Uh... Yeah. They were struggling a bit. They after that Juve game, uh, twenty one goals in uh, six games. Yeah, twenty one goals in six games. If I'm counting uh, correctly, that that, that includes a three one win against Cagliari today, and it's yeah. uh, it's fifteen goals in the past in the past four games, and all this without Papu Gomez, and and I think it's all Ilicic stepping up. You know what? I'm I'm really shocked because I really thought. The Gomez situation would have completely distracted the team, and then you're losing your your number ten, um, and, and your captain, and your captain, your leader. And I thought it would have yeah. like divided the, the the dressing room, but somehow they're getting it done. Um, I don't know if that is that's a good thing for for Gomez because um, you know who knows where he's going to end up in the final these final two weeks of the Mercato. Uh, Atlanta saying they don't want to sell him to a big club. I'm tagging Montreal Impact. Uh, in posts, in every post that I can, to, <laughs> I want him to come to Montreal uh, or, or a Club, Club de Foot Montreal. Uh, he can officially become a snowflake if yeah, he wants. Yeah, <laughs> I think he'd look good in that uh, in that ugly crest. But uh, yeah. but yeah, very unique situation. But Atalanta, yeah, like I said, they're they're back, and you got to be happy. I think, uh, like I said, they're on pause. Uh, 
you know, I guess it's credit to them that, you know, they didn't make this situation so far. I mean, uh, it's been not too long, but so far it hasn't crippled them uh, as of late, which is which is impressive. It shows that their locker room is still intact. Gasperini, I guess, still has, and the players are still on some sort of the same page, uh, you know, minus Papu Gomez. But it just, for me, it's just still sad. I think Papu Gomez has been a staple in, in Italian soccer in Serie A, uh, you know, these past years. And it's sad to see that situation. Uh, they're saying he's not going to be going to another direct rival in Serie A, which would hurt even more to see him leave the league. Uh, maybe, I don't know if he's going to go to China or, you know, the, uh, you know, another another team, uh, you know, out uh, out of the country. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's it's good on them. We always know they can score. Uh, they've shown it. And, again, this is going to bleed into my uh, my MVP, but, uh, but Muriel, super sub uh, of dreams. Uh, he's been fantastic. So it's all coming uh, all coming together right now for Atlanta. Johnny, you got anything to add? Well, they have, if I'm not mistaken, I think they have seven wins in a row now, Atalanta. Um, oh, that's a good yeah. start, is it? Yeah, if um, it just it just goes to show that maybe there is a bit of a distraction in the room. Uh, I don't want to say Papo Gomez is completely to blame for it um, because he's the type of player that yeah, if he does right now, it's not showing it, but if he does leave, there is an effect that will be felt by the team. Uh, you know, seasons are roller coasters, so sometimes you'll have ups and sometimes you'll have downs. And I think if uh, I think it's just. Uh, I want to say happenstance that they're having an up during this whole Gomez conflict. Um, you know, it's something that, uh, like, even remember, I think it was a two, three seasons ago when we first, first started, there was a whole Icardi situation with Inter, yet they were still somehow getting results. Yeah. Uh, and and then they had, until they did their own little readjustment with getting Lukaku and Conte and whatnot, they started to dip a lot in quality. So, um I would hold judgment on the whole Papu Gomez situation with them, maybe towards the end of the season or until he actually is moved, uh, and then see what happens right after that. Uh, so it's good. Like we we know they always been an offensive force. You know they didn't get yeah. like I keep on forgetting the exact number, but it was like what ninety six, ninety eight goals last year. Uh, they don't get that from nothing. You know it's not just one player producing or assisting those ninety six to ninety eight goals. You know it's. It's it's a team effort and it's a system effort. So uh, Gasparini has a system that works. He's using the players, but I think Gomez is a bigger part of that system that that's not being showed right now. That's that's just what I'm taking from it. I could be wrong though. You know, I could oh, be proven it's, wrong it's an, and fine. It's but, an interesting take, but they're still weak in defense. That's my only probably criticism. They they need to shore up that defense. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be this Mercato going into the summer, but. Um, they need some some more pieces back there. I, I, in my personal opinion. By the way, Atalanta, they've won. Um, they've won. They haven't lost one. Oh, sorry, no. They've they've only won four games. They've only won four games in a row, but they're oh. they're unbeaten in since November. Uh, no, in what is that one, two, three? Uh, in in ten, they're unbeaten in ten. Uh, the last time they lost was two nothing at Verona on November twenty uh, eighth. Um, there you go. So we talked about the, the first derby um, this weekend. We talked about that with Gigi. We got the second derby, uh, Juve, Inter. I don't know, Adriano, uh, um, you know, as a Milan fan, maybe you you hate one team more than the other, but, uh, you know, maybe it's it, it's kind of you, uh, uh, it's going to be painful to watch or something. I don't know. But for me as a Juve fan, I mean, obviously I'm excited about this one, but um, I don't want to make any predictions, you know. Uh, even heading to that Milan oh. game, I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I, I think with this Juve team, there's games where you don't know what to expect out of them. Like, they, they should have easily beaten Genoa. But then again, you know, there was a lot of young players, a lot of missed chances. Um, their goalie, who I already forget his name, turned into prime Buffon. A lot of, a lot of saves. So, th- there's those games with Juve where uh, things just are unpredictable. Then they play the big teams and, and they play really well. So, uh you know, they were expecting a couple of guys back from injury. You had uh, Chiesa and McKenney leave last week against Sassuolo. Um, and then there's still Cuadrado, Alexandro, and Delit who still need a test negative for COVID. So there's a lot of uh, yeah. unknown factors. But you know what? I, I, I think it's going to be a really exciting game, as it always is, between uh, Inter and Juve. And um, it, it definitely has those Scudetto implications. And obviously, obviously, I really want Juve to go out, to go out and get the three points. I don't want it to be a, a draw. I hate draws. 
I do not like draws. It's, it's just, especially for a derby. Like I said before, it's so, you, you're coming into it with so much expectations, nerves, anxiety, and then for it to finish the same <laughs> way it started is is not fun. So, uh, so you know, I I just hope it's a good game, and I hope I hope there's no controversy, officiating controversy for either, either side because that's going to take away from the from the game, and and we don't want that. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I got draw, draw, big draw over this game. I need a draw. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if uh, if I take off, you know, the Milan bias, uh, yeah, no, it should be a good game. Uh, you know, even if I do take off my Milan bias, I, I still think a draw can be possible. And I think Juventini, yes, you know, you don't want to draw, but you'll take that point and, and run. You know, uh, the, the, you know, it's it's one of those games that. There are some pieces missing. Uh, you know, teams have been up and down in form. We've seen uh, in these past weeks, but these are two top clubs. Uh, you know, a lot on the line this year. Uh, a lot of history, a lot of everything behind this game, and they still have to play again, <laughs> again later on in the season, right? So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, Pierre will play against another former team of his, and uh, now this time behind the bench. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting how him and uh, Conte face off. Uh, you know, uh, the tactician apparently in Conte and uh, the maestro that they call him, uh, Andrea Pirlo. So we'll, we'll see how it is. But I think, um, yeah, I personally think uh, a draw, uh, maybe like a 2-2 or something. I'm saying I'm saying a uh, Juve win. Uh, I honestly think that uh, Juve is a team that has, the, has depth that should not be underestimated. Um, you know, we like to make jokes about some of these random players that they get sometimes. But, for example, like, I had no idea who Weston McKenney was before Juve got him. I'll be completely honest. You know, like, I don't really watch Bundesliga, but I think he came from Schalke yeah. from seeing yeah. Richard's tweets and whatnot. And, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the whole, uh, I guess, stereotype of him being American, you're like, okay, well, this is European soccer. Will he adapt very well, even though he's been playing in Europe? And he's been proving a lot of people wrong. He's been proving me yeah. wrong in terms of, like, I don't think he's going to be able to be solid, but he's great for, for Juve. I was watching some recent highlights. He did, like, a back heel pass that was just, like, in the ball. Like, great. Well done, you know? So that's uh, just a testament to, like, how uh, Juventus has a way to just get some quality out of anybody that they go out and get. Um, a bit like Belichick with the way he has some of his players in the Patriots. So uh, <laughs> I had to, had to plug that in. But I think Juve is going to, when he, when these big games come along, they did it against Milan, they got the result. And I think against Inter, they're going to get the result. And they're making their climb again to the first place position. So we'll, we'll, plus, they uh, got, plus they got a game in hand. Plus they got a game yeah, in hand. Yeah, yes. that's true. So there's still that game to be played. And we always know that the the, the depth in the bench situation for Juve, it's never that's not going to go away. Uh, we know that they have the you know the luxury of bringing on uh, you know some some great players, and but you know so the you know Inter has improved as well, so it's it's going to be interesting to say the least. For sure, for sure. Uh, I guess we'll we'll finish off this uh, the show with our MVPs and M- MVPs and uh, and cards. I want to start off from the MB- my MVP because I'm excited about this one. Uh, a guy I never okay. heard of until yesterday. Go ahead. Hamza Rafia, the big uh, Rafia. The, the Juventino superstar. You, you you know they're really getting into the uh, the randoms of the squad when uh, you're attacking midfielders wearing number fifty. <laughs> 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 uh, but you know what? Good for the kid. Twenty one years old, uh, born in Tunisia, grew up in France, uh, grew up through the Lyon Academy, uh, signed with Juve in 2019, played for the U23 team. And that's one thing. You remember the the Juve. Primavera, the U23 team, they play in the City of Chi. These guys that were playing yesterday played in the City of Chi. They won the City of Chi Copa Italia last, last year. Rafia actually scored the winning goal in, in the final. Um, so it's just crazy to think. They're playing in the third division, and then suddenly they're playing with, with Ronaldo. Um, so good for him. He actually he actually got hurt. He actually got hurt. I don't know when. I don't know if it was like in the celebration right after the goal. He got hurt. He's actually going to be out about three weeks. But oh, uh, sure. still, good good for him. He made his mark. He might never score again for for Juve again. Who knows? But uh, you got it. It's one of those feel good moments. Now Morata um, and still a... Morata. Rafia couldn't finish. Rafia does finish. Juventus have their goal right on the stroke of half time in extra time. Johnny. 
Yeah, just a completely random question because it just it just kind of boggles my mind a little bit. Like, what what happens if the say it's, I don't know, like just the way fate is sometimes that like the prima primavera just somehow moves up to city A B and then somehow moves up to city A. What happens then? Like, they're, I know it's not, impossible. I know it's probably a block. The, or something. They're not allowed in block? the same division. So okay, so they could be in city A B, but they can't be in city A. Exactly. If if they go okay, up to city A B, uh, and they actually win the league at Highly unlo- unlikely. It's you know boys. But let's men. just say in the magical world, it does yeah. happen. Uh, they basically wouldn't go up. They would take te- take the next the next team who's eligible to go up. Um, gotcha. Okay. I- I'd love enough. to see them in the city of B. You know that that's real good competition, but. You know, like and I said, I'll be really good. It, you know, it's just to say that your primavera is playing in the second flight yeah. league. That just that's just gonna speak like volumes of the depth of the team. Yeah. Like it's just it's it's gonna it, that would be extremely crazy. But, but I, the I, think the, those, third flight, I think those teams they're not focused as much on winning and just developing talent, just getting used to the game speed and everything. Exactly. I was yeah, but if you're too. playing against talent that's better than your talent, you're just gonna elevate yourself to be better yeah. anyway. So, yeah, exactly. So it, any any time you play a steeper competition, you're definitely gonna get more out of your players. Exactly. Uh, you guys uh, have well, I guess I guess since I was talking, I'll go second. <laughs> Sorry. Take it away, Joe. No, take it take it away. I, I had a toss-up of who I really wanted to give uh, my MVP. I'll give uh, a shout-out to Montipo. 11 saves on 15 shots on target in the Atalanta game, even though Benevento lost 4-1. You know, he did make some very big saves for uh, Benevento, and I think the loss wasn't completely credited to him. Uh, a lot of times, the Benevento backline had their backs turned towards other threats in Atalanta, and all the other players were just left unmarked, and he just got in for the easy goal. So, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Bajrami for Empoli, as I said before. Two goals uh, in the Napoli, uh, in the loss to Napoli in the, the Coppa Italia. But their shots, beautifully well placed. Like, no keeper can save those, and fantastic, fantastic shots. But... My MVP of the week will go to the other Milinkovic Savage, Vanya, <laughs> for uh, Torino. 13 saves in the Milan game, uh, even though they lost yeah. in uh, in penalty shots. You know, it's like I said before, penalty shots. Yes, there is a bit of skill, but there's a bigger luck factor than there is in in an actual game. So, yeah, he got the loss, but 13 saves himself. Great job. Uh, he gets my MVP of the week. And and he scored a goal in the in the shootouts. He blasted. Yeah, I was that just shot. about to say. He yeah, blasted he scored that a goal shot. In, the, in the PKs. There you go. So he looked like a bit of a cycle, but uh, <laughs> you know what? He, he, you know, he put his he put his team in a position to have a chance to 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 win, right? So yeah, you got to exactly. give him credit for that for sure. And, and I was shocked because he was the fifth shooter. If he missed, Milan would have won. You know, you're you're putting your goalie as your fifth shooter. I I thought it was a joke. I thought they were going to do it as a meme at first. And you kind of heard like Milan players making comments behind, and he just blasted that thing. That was amazing. It looked like yeah, his brother no, a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. No, it was it was it was interesting. It, it caught me a bit off guard as well. But um, yeah, I know Johnny had good points and credit to him uh, in, in that performance. But uh, for myself, uh, for my MVP. Um, I'm going to shout out before I give my actual MVP. I'm going to shout out um, uh, Inzola from uh, Spezia, uh, scoring again uh, against uh, Sampdoria. I believe it was on Monday uh, in, in that match. I think he scored on the PK, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, just a, a player from a team that is weren't expected to do anything really, and uh, he's proven his worth in that attack. Uh, I believe he has nine goals on the year so far. Uh, tied with a bunch of other players, uh, you know, top uh, top uh, top the list there. But uh, for me, that's been very impressive to see what he's done on on a team like Spezia, uh, especially scoring almost now double digit goals, which is nice. Uh, but my guy, I'm going to give it to this week MVP is Luis Muriel. Um, I've always said he's been uh, Serie is his league. He loves Italy. He loves to play here. Uh, he he scored uh, again <laughs> these uh, these past two games. Uh, or he, he hasn't, I think the last time he didn't score um, uh, was December 16th in the 1-1 uh, tied to Juve. Uh, this is counting all competitions he scored. He's on like a six-goal game uh, scoring streak. So he's just been fantastic. Super sub of dreams, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, put him, put him on and he seems to score. So um, this is what he's done pretty much everywhere he's went. And he, I think he'll continue to do this uh, in this Atalanta, you know, uh, fire 
amazing offense that they have. You know, they, they always have a spark, and he's definitely one of them. So, me this week, MVP, uh, Luis Muriel. So, I guess we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll do our cards now. Uh, I guess we'll just go, go in the same order. Reverse gonna, order? Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to give a... <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to give a, a yellow card to... Um, Juve's attack for missing all kinds of chances, not only in the Sassuolo match on the weekend, but also against Genoa. I found against Sassuolo, um, they just weren't taking their chances enough. Um, you know, uh, I think Ronaldo missed uh, missed a few. Um, they just they just weren't clinical, and and it, they could have had a lot more goals. And they allowed Sassuolo to come in, back into the game. And you know, thankfully for for Ramsey scored. Uh, to make it 2-1, you know, Ronaldo put it to bed. So you're, you're going to look at the, the score line. You're not going to remember those missed chances. Um, but it was just, it looked like it was just going to be one, one of those games. And then, and then same thing against Genoa. Um, you know, I, I think this is more the fact that it was a young team playing. You know, the offense was kind of relying on, on Kulazeski. He was kind of playing in that Dybala role. And, and he was just kind of waiting half a second, half a second to, to you know take that shot and and then because of that he lost the ball a few times I know he scored and he had the assist uh so you know it, it, it at the end of the, at the end of the day it was a good game but you know I don't think it should have gone into extra time especially with the derby coming up on the weekend uh you don't want to play those extra 30 minutes you didn't you didn't want Ronaldo to come in and play uh so he's just got to they just got to be more clinical they just got to take those chances when they can so for me that's a yellow card this is definitely going to be another yellow. Adri, Johnny, I guess we'll go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my red card is going to be a little bit away from City A, but it's been something that we discussed before, and it's been on everybody's mind. Is a uh, Club de Foot uh, Montreal's uh, <laughs> logo? Uh, big, big red card. You guys severely dropped the ball on that. Um, the logo is horrendous. The name is good. I like the name. I like the fact that it gives us a European distinction, so to speak. Like it gives a, I guess a bit of a more prestigious sound. But the logo, horrendous. The way you marketed it, terrible. <laughs> so, uh, big red card to you guys. Uh, imagine it was that bad that I had to go off city uh, disc- discussion to give you guys that red card. <laughs> Take that from this fan. It's gonna go <laughs> to the pocket and no, get out the red. Uh, it's a red yeah, card. No, it's, I think. Yeah, I, 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 sorry, I was just going to say, I was going to give that too, but I saw Johnny wrote that down, so. Yeah, I was gonna, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, that was another one of these ones I think we can have all agreed to, to give it to, but um, uh, I guess I'll go with my red card. Um, I am giving a red card, and I'm not going to say small yellow card, not big red card, just a red card this week. Um, maybe actually a big one, I don't know, but uh, for me, Cagliari, uh, as of late, as of a long time now, it's, they haven't won uh, since uh, November, um, and I, I believe, yeah, the last time they haven't won, yeah, uh, the last time they picked up a win was back in November. Uh, they've looked horrible. Uh, just can't. It seems like they just can't buy a win. It, it's it's that bad over there in Cagliari, which is sad because you know they have some good players. I, I like some of their talent. Um, you know, they they obviously brought in brought home uh, Nangalan again uh, once again there, but. Uh, you know, the likes of Jean Pedro, Cholito, Simeone, uh, you know, they, they got Sogodin in the back. They got some other pieces uh, in the midfield, Nandez and, and, and so forth there. But it's just been, I don't know what it is. If it's Di Francesco curse again, I, I don't know what it is. But it's uh, it's looking a bit bleak over there in Cagliari right now. And it's, it's again, sad to see. But having won since November, uh, the streak is just bringing them down the standings. Uh, you know, not acceptable, I, I would assume, from their fan uh, perspectives. So I'm going to have to give them a red card uh, this week uh, for their performances. This is going to be a red card. And is that going to change the course of the game? And I think just before... Well, well I just want to add one thing about Cali. Uh They yeah. went through this last year. Uh, last year, they won. They beat Sampdoria 4-3 on December 2nd. And then they didn't win until June 23rd. So I know we had the break, go. but it was 12 games. They went 12 games without a win. Uh, that included uh, nine, uh, sorry, eight losses and and four draws. And this time around, they haven't won since uh, November seventh against Sampdoria. Also, so they beat Sampdoria and then they go on a losing streak. It's nine, 
nine matches in uh, City A. They did win one against Verona on uh, November 25th, but if we're just looking at City A, nine matches without a win. So they're they're there you it's go. pretty much a mirror image of last season. Sorry, Adrian, Which, go ahead. No, 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 and and I'm glad you brought that up because it's uh, I think it's 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 not acceptable for them. I, I mean, I don't know. It's like you any any professional team you can go on these. Yes, we go through slumps. Yes, there's there's dark periods, but. Um, you know, it's, it's it's just crazy. You're doing that two years in a row. Uh, you know, change of player, change of manager, change of system, and it's still the same situation. But um, you know, besides besides you know, Padma looking bad, like we mentioned in the past, Kaladi is right uh, is right in there with that, and uh, it's 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 suffering their season a bit. But again, hopefully, maybe they can come back from it. Uh, but I think uh, a communal red card from us, uh, and you know. <laughs> That's a deal for fucking uh, Sabrina Belmonte. God bless her. She uh, she managed to snapshot this, but uh, red card from all three of us. Uh, I, I hope you guys agree. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. The uh, the Serie A dropping the ball on that on that post of the of the standings uh, with team names and logos all out of whack. Uh, you know, Juve is the new Roma. Roma is the new Juve. Uh, Atalanta is the new Sassuolo or the old Sassuolo. Who knows? Uh, it was a nightmare. I think there was only a handful of teams that were that were correct, uh, and the rest were, were, were a total shit show. They they deleted that tweet right away. And uh, but thank God for Sabrina coming up clutch, uh, <laughs> screenshotting that. I know uh, I know that tweet got uh, who won culture Twitter over at our over at the city I sit down uh, with our friends over there. And uh, we're gonna have to give her on our end a big 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 red card uh, from all three of us over here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Another red card is shown. Uh, yeah, before we go, uh, yeah, check that out on uh, Sabri B10 on Twitter. Oh my god, it's hilarious! It's so funny. Yeah. I, I was dying of laughter. I was actually dying out loud it's when crazy. I saw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it out as best as I can. So uh, it starts off the table. So they posted the table after match a 17. Uh, Milan and Inter proper logos. Then they had Roma with Juve's logo, Juventus with Roma's logo, Atalanta with Napoli Napoli's lo- logo. Napoli was Sassuolo. Sassuolo had Verona's logo. Uh, Lazio had Atalanta. Hellas Verona had Lazio. Benevento had Udinese. Sampdoria had their own logo. They were fine. Fiorentina had Caledi. Bologna had their own logo. Uh, Spezia Parma. Udinese had Benevento. Caledi had Spezia. Genoa had Fiorentina. Torino had Genoa. Parma had Torino. And finally, Crotone had their own logo. So you only had four teams Four teams were correct out of twenty. What a mess! You messed this up so bad. So Yo, so there definitely a firing had to happen or something, and maybe you know take a break from social media, or something. I don't know, but we're, that is... we're giving it another red card. That's going to be a red card. The red card is out. It's no surprise. Absolutely, is against the rules. Anyways, that will do it for us here on the Couch, guys. Jani, enjoy the derby tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> I, uh, and I think uh, I, I, I think I, we all will, are. Uh, I actually think I, I'm actually, for once, not working during a game. So I'm actually excited for that. Yeah, perfect. I'll be home for it. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> I didn't check the time until <laughs> now. I was like, oh, yeah, sure, there is a derby. I know there is a derby tomorrow, but I thought it was going to be uh, a game that I was going to miss because of work, but I won't. No, it's 2.45, if I'm not mistaken, right? The, yeah. right, uh, prime time? Yeah, I have, the, I have the morning shift tomorrow, so I'm good. Adri, where can uh, people find us on social Beautiful. media? Yeah, so guys, make sure first off, catch uh, the derby, the two derbies like we mentioned earlier on in the episode. Uh, go follow uh, Gijo and the accounts that he plugged, Roma Club Philadelphia, Grand Cafe L'Aquila, all the good stuff over there. But where you can find us, at the Calcio guys, on all your favorite uh, podcasting platforms, on all social media platforms, that's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as well. Uh, you know, rate the podcast, share the podcast, give it a listen, uh, share it uh, to all your Calcio buddies, and uh, we'll be back uh, next week to uh, do a review of the derbies and talk a lot more culture. Thanks for listening. Ciao. Bye. Outro Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Della Colli, and myself, Nicholas DiGiovanni. 
We want to bring Caltro back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at the Caltro Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The outro song is The Last Ones by Jazar. Thank you.